Okay, great. So um, before we get stuck into this session, I have a little question for you. And this is just to help you to get used to the chat box and also to give you something to think about. It relates to what we're going to uh, be talking about this evening. So my question is, to what extent are you satisfied in your work right now? So between one and 10, one being not satisfied at all, 10 being extremely satisfied, love everything about it. So you can write your answers in the chat box and we will have a look at them a little bit later. Okay, go for it. To what extent are you satisfied in your work right now? Brilliant, some people are starting to put in their answers. Great. So I'll introduce you to James. James is a father of two. He lives in Bristol. For those of you that don't know it, James is my brother. And uh, so I've known him a long time. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's an avid rock climber and he also loves cycling and running. He's an incredible life coach, like a really, really incredible life coach. He has so much passion for what he does. He has so much passion for helping people. And he's very committed to personal development. Out of everybody that I've ever met, he is one of the most committed <laughs> out of everyone I know to personal development. And he will literally do whatever it takes to understand himself better and to understand other people better. And um, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to him this evening and to introduce him to all of you. So we're going to talk a little bit about his work and his journey. So welcome, James. Thank you for joining me this evening for this session. Um, yeah. so... <laughs> I could have came in at this point, actually, I would have preferred that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the intro. How are you today? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, it's been a funny up and down day, but I'm um, really, really happy to be here and, and seeing some lovely faces and being beamed into, into the Emerald Isle. <laughs> it's lovely to have you here too. Um, so you've had quite an interesting career path, I think it's safe to say. Um, you've worked as a consultant, a business analyst, a project manager in London. You founded a tech startup. You also founded a business um, designing and making furniture, bespoke high quality furniture. And you even worked in Silicon Valley at one stage as a software engineer back in the day, about 20 odd years ago. Um, lots, of interesting, lots of interesting parts to your career path, but I'm just wondering you eventually found your way to life coaching. So what was it that drew you to life coaching? Yeah, it's funny. I don't carry around all the memory of all those things. So it's even listening back. I'm like, oh, yeah, I did do some of that stuff. Didn't I? <laughs> um, so in terms of finding my way to coaching, that's interesting because I was lucky enough that I had a job in, in London in 2007 to 2008 and it was um, a big project management job and um, it was like implementing big tech technology systems and during that job I just I felt like I was failing really I just it wasn't really working out and and so um, really uncomfortable and, and difficult place to work um, so I asked for a coach I'd heard about coaching I didn't really know what it was but I'd had a swimming coach before and I kind of thought you know maybe maybe someone can help me um, so I asked, I asked for a coach and they provided one. And this guy was amazing. He was, um, had had a long career. Um, he'd worked in Shell. He'd worked in the VSO. He'd done lots of stuff. And he met me, I can't remember now exactly, but maybe once a month, once every three weeks, perhaps for a couple of hours. And we'd kind of go into a meeting room and just, you know, focus on whatever was coming up. And, and I, you know, since that in 2008, um, I've had a lot of coaches over the years. So I've just kind of realized, you know, how valuable it is. But I never thought of myself as becoming a coach. It, you know, it was a service I liked to enjoy or benefit from, but I never really, yeah, I never saw myself doing that ever. But then one day I was, when I had my startup in London, we were turning an Android phone into a hearing aid. That was the, the actual product. And I was recruiting um, and I was meeting people. And one of the guys I've met, um, he, I can't remember exactly the role we were looking for, but anyway, we met in a coffee shop and it was kind of like an interview. And by the end of the hour, I was in my mind, I, I kind of knew he wasn't going to be a right, the right fit. Mm -hmm. And I explained, you know, I was like, actually, you know, it's been really nice to meet you, but you know, this isn't, this isn't going to be quite a, the right fit. And he said, oh, I understand, but could we meet again? And, and, you know, I had a young baby at the time, startup that wasn't doing so well. And we were trying to kind of make it work. And I was working long hours. And I, I was kind of thinking, uh, I don't really have time. So I, I was kind of saying, well, yeah, maybe I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll meet again. 
And he said, no, 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 I'd really like to meet you again. Can I, you know, can I pay you to have another coffee with me or something like this? He said, and I was like, that's weird. That's really, <laughs> uh, kind of backing away, like, it's uh, uncomfortable. Um, and, and actually, what I realized when I did back away far enough that my questions in the interview were kind of, I was really trying to figure out who he was and whether he'd fit and whether his future looked like our future and, you know, all of those types of things. So the questions I was asking him, ultimately, he found valuable. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the interesting thing was, even though we had funding for the startup, we weren't actually, we were kind of tanking, we weren't getting customers. And um, so we, on, on one side of my life, I was kind of losing business, if you like, or not, not succeeding. And on the other side, there was somebody here offering me his hard earned cash to kind of just meet him. Mm-hmm. So I was like, uh, I can't ignore that. So, um, so I said to him, oh, well, I think what's happened is I've, I've kind of coached you and I don't really know what I'm doing because I've never trained in that. But, you know, I could meet you for six sessions if you wanted and mm-hmm. you can pay me. You know, we, fi- we agreed on a price. I think it was 100 quid a session or something. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he said, yeah, OK. So we did that. And, and the thing I really noticed in myself was how much... Um, it meant to me like how prepared I was, how many, how much notes I took, how much I read up about, you know, the stuff that we were talking about. And, uh, and then from that moment forward, I just, I couldn't ignore how interested I was and committed mm-hmm. I was to it. Um, so, yeah. So then I went off and, and um, did tra- got trained and, and kind of became like a official kind of coach, mm-hmm. I suppose. Mm-hmm. That was uh, five and a half years ago. Okay. And um so I know that one, one of the passions that you have is around work. And one of the things that you've got going on at the moment is called sweet work. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, for me, I think, like, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, at the bottom of his hierarchy has like, you know, um, that we need safety and we need water and we need sleep and we need things like that. Then as you move up, you need kind of, well, you need shelter and you need stuff like that. But you know you step up through it and hopefully none of us are kind of at the bottom of that hierarchy and you know we're all kind of enjoying like um somewhere kind of closer to the top or in the middle at least but at the very top of Maslow's hierarchy needs he has something called self-actualization which was a piece that he added later and for me self-actualization is really like you know it's it's when you find out who you are and you're able to kind of be who you are in the world and and I really think about that in terms of your productive hours like what you do with your with your kind of work time so for me I, I realized quite a long time ago that what you know I, I was kind of searching and trying and, and doing different things and, and really I figured out what it was was that I was trying to figure out who I was so that I could do that for the benefit of other people so that was my kind of mantra figure out figure out what you can do and do that for the better benefit of others and so um, I think that you can do that through work and that was how I wanted to kind of self-actualize I suppose if you think about it that way which is quite a you know it's a lofty term and and maybe it will never be achieved but that's that's the kind of aim and I think um well I think a lot about all of this but I I feel that a lot of people are in work and they don't enjoy what they're doing and as a result of that they live for the weekends or they live for their holidays and they're they're just you know trying to escape and Mm -hmm. so whether it's you know buying a coffee to kind of smooth the ride every morning or buying magazines or buying holidays or I just I think there's a lot of escapism and I think that's that's really um doesn't need to be the way that it is mm-hmm. um so yeah I mean, I mean there's so much this is like my topic there's so much I can talk about like so I don't know whether I should keep going Emery or you want to pick no questions? I think you should keep going because like okay. I'm curious to know you're saying it doesn't have to be that way so what is your vision then yeah I mean I, I think why the reason we're in this situation is because at school and society generally, we don't we don't do a good job of helping people understand themselves. Mm-hmm. Helping people understand what it is that you're innately and naturally good at. And, and we all are brilliant at certain things and, and not so good at other areas. And we tend to become hyper aware of the things that we're not good at. And um, and and the message that kind of, you know, if, for example, you're doing three subjects in school and you get an A in one and you get, you know, two C's and the other well the message is actually okay what can we do about those C's because you've kind of reached the limit and and that's the highest we only award A's that's the highest you can go whereas actually another way of looking at that would be my gosh you know you're already doing an A Uh, you know how could we make that A like even better and if you think about that in terms of your career or in performance at anything whether it's sport or or work or whatever um 
you know, I think actually it's much more valuable to spend more time uh, developing the aspects that you're already naturally good at. Mm -hmm. And then you, you can become really outstanding at that. And it's not to say that, you know, coming back to school, it's not to say that you don't do other subjects, but I think they're, they're kind of driven pretty hard. And, and really, I think school is aiming to make us well-rounded and, and all-rounded. Whereas another analogy is that, um, you know, if you think about it, like a star, you've kind of got the this points of the star are like the things that you're good at. Mm -hmm. And actually school is trying to fill out like make the kind of star a little bit more shallow and and fill out the bits that you're not good at these are the weaknesses in here mm -hmm. whereas yeah I, I i think that's like a, a strengths-based philosophy would say that you you should really understand what you're good at and then kind of develop that because mm -hmm. that's that's you know fulfilling for you but it's also highly valuable to the you know the people who need those services or or whatever it is you're working on mm. um so i guess my vision would be that that people will will work in a way that's harmonious and and kind of you know in line with who they are and um um yeah it's like energizing you know it's it's fulfilling it's kind of they you know, even if you weren't getting paid you'd do it anyway because it's mm -hmm. it's who you are mm. so what do you think those the key elements are that are required then to achieve that um you need to know yourself like that, that I think is that's the kind of tricky part because you know we spend so long in our own heads we almost um you know we kind of miss miss the things that we find easy uh, and almost assume that everyone can do those things so I think part of it is be, being able to kind of turn turn that back on yourself and that's why working with someone who's external like working working with the coaches can help because they're objective but um yeah so I think I think uh, for me, there's, there's kind of three ingredients. I often draw this as, as a Venn diagram and, and um, I think about three, yeah, three things in terms of work. So one of them is, is meaningful or another word would be purposeful or purpose. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like really working in the area of your passion. Like, so, um, you know, what, what, for example, would be the big problem in the world that you'd like to solve? Like, what's the thing that would get you out of bed? So that's, that's the kind of, that's one part of the Venn diagram. Another part would be like, authenticity so like who are you and what are your strengths you know what does that look like what um what do you what do you love to spend your time on what like what do you need to have around you in terms of um you know in, in, to be able to perform uh, and then the last part is kind of um of the venn diagram would be like sustainability and i and i mean that in terms of what's sustainable to you as a person so that could be uh like what hours do you need to work across the week or it could be you know, I meet people who work for three months and then they take a month off. Like it, that's just thinking about it, the pattern in terms of um, hours and things, but it's much more than that. It's, it's like um, sustainability can also be how much money do you need to earn? It can be, um, you know, who, who else do you need to have around you to be able to deliver your, your work? Um, and who do you engage with? So, yeah, I mean, that, that's how I kind of, when I'm working with people, I tend to try and group it into those three areas. And, and sometimes you meet people who are, they know exactly that they want to take all the plastics out of the ocean. So they really know what the purpose is, but they might not know what way they want to work on that. Mm -hmm. um, or they know that they, you know, they're a working mom and they can only work between the hours of 10 and three, but they don't really know what they're going to do in that time, but they want it to be meaningful or they want it to be based on who they are. So like you kind of, people tend to have some knowledge within that, but not necessarily all of it covered, you know? Mm -hmm. So like for somebody who is kind of, thinking about this and going okay how can I apply this to myself what would be a good starting point for them yeah well I, I like working with people one-on-one -on -one when I can but uh, if I can't um as a generic thing I think it, it's yeah so taking those three sections um I suppose starting with the authentic one like what I often do is define flow so like there's this concept it's a psychological concept it's it, the, the same term would be um or the same thing would be in the zone so you know if you've had this experience of really being kind of in the zone of of whatever it is um which do you want me to Amory do you want me to define that and then yeah. we can do it almost as an example yeah, or a little kind of exercise that'd be great um so yeah maybe if you, if you tune into this and, and especially for the people I saw that there was at least one person said that their experience of work at the moment was a one which obviously pretty low um so yeah i, I mean I, th I think it's a valuable exercise anyway so so flow um has five kind of key ingredients and i always describe it in the same way because it makes sense to me this way but so as Amri said I'm, i like rock climbing and so when i go rock climbing 
um, indoors, I'm, um, th so these are ingredients of flow. I'm there by choice, which is very key. So, I, I, you know, no one's making me do it. I, I'm turning up because I absolutely adore it. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, no one's asking me to do it or forcing me to do it. And when, I, when I'm there, um, I'm very aware of what I want to be able to do. So like if I'm climbing the green route or whatever, I know that I want to get to the top of the green route. So I'm very aware of the goal. That's, uh, I'm clear on, on what my action is. Um, that's another ingredient in flow. And when I'm actually climbing, you know, depending on the severity of the route, I know that I might fall, but I know that if I fall, I'm probably not going to die because I'm on a rope. So there's it, within flow, there's kind of like a, if you imagine a graph um, on one axis, there's like boredom on the other axis, there's um, stress. And so you kind of want to be somewhere between the two. So you don't want to be like stressed out of your mind, not able to think and, and operate, but also you don't want to be just twiddling your thumbs. So, so yeah, you, you kind of, a certain amount of, um, I suppose, adrenaline or, or focus comes. Mm -hmm. um, and then another item, which is an interesting one is uh, they describe it as having immediate feedback. So in terms of rock climbing, when you're climbing, you can, you know, grip onto a hold. And um, if you haven't gripped onto that very well, as you go to move some other part of your body, you might feel that you're going to peel off or kind of your balance goes. So that's immediate feedback. You're, in, you're, you're instantly feeling the fact that actually, oh, I need to shift something to stay on the wall. Another way of thinking about this is if you imagine um, someone playing violin in a orchestra, if they hit a bum note, They'll hear it themselves. Like, oh, concentrate, you know, focus here. Okay, you know, I've just, you know, I lapsed in concentration or whatever. So it's that immediate feedback. Um, and then the last bit is that it's immersive. It's kind of, it, you know, it absorbs, it absorbs your focus. So having defined flow, what I usually would ask people to do is have a think um, back in your own life, like in your own history of when that might have occurred for you. And you know, if, if I'm working with someone and it's to do with work, I'll, I'll usually see if they can come up with a work example, but it doesn't always happen. Um, so, I mean, we could look for a bit of participation here if anyone's willing, but, or we could just, as any, you could maybe stick your hand up. That would be great. <laughs> oh yeah, Orla. Oh, Orla, I think you had your hand up, did you? My, yeah, yeah I was unmuted, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I might as well. I arrived late, though. I apologize. No worries. <laughs> so, so do you have an example of when you've been in flow in work or otherwise? I should have thought of this before I put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> I like your bravery. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, within work, there are elements of time where it's kind of in flow. Um, but can you like, think, can you bring to my, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. But I wouldn't necessarily have kind of, uh, you know, hit all five of your whatever, like in terms of, you know, I mean, I show up w willingly, but I wouldn't necessarily, like I'd probably be sitting at home drinking a cup of tea, you know, if, you know, yeah. if I didn't earn money and actually build a bit of self-respect for myself. If you know what I mean. <laughs> and as you're brave enough to put your hand up, is there an area of your like life outside of work that you could say that, yes, actually what he just described, you know, I can see myself in a totally different non-work scenario. <laughs> have, we, have we hit something that's... Uh... <laughs> Hey, I think we're better off sticking with work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm imagining what you might be um, experiencing flow in or not. Um, okay. So, well, I guess the, so the next thing we would do is, um, you know, it's sometimes people can't find that in itself is interesting. And, but some of the workshops I do, you, you t tend to experience flow in the workshops and we can talk about that. But if someone has an example and, and some of the examples I've heard over the years are not related to work at all. Like, like I remember one memorable one, um, somebody said dancing. And, you know, their work is not related to dancing. So immediately I'm kind of thinking, oh, but as we, so the next step I would take is to, to ask, um, you know, what, what, what was it like, you know, really kind of mine the experience that they're having, like, look, look around, like if they picture in their mind, what is it? Like, what is it? And actually in that dancing example, um, she was surrounded by her friends and uh, it was actually to do with connection and 
working alongside other people. And so like, actually there's a, there's a rich seam of, um, you know, that you can kind of mine to discover what is it that you're doing? Cause when you're in flow, it's deeply satisfying. It's deeply rewarding. It's fulfilling. And, and it's in a way it's you at your best. So if somebody can, you, you know, if you, if you're an employee and you get paid to do that, that's very beneficial for the employer and, and for you and for anyone you're providing a service to. So, um, that's kind of how it works, but is there anyone else who's prepared or willing to share or has a kind of example? If you don't you want to do it in person, you can put it in the chat box. I do kind of have an example. Um, Go for it. Sorry. It like, you know, yoga would be, I do, I am in flow in a good yoga class. I am in flow and when I'm, t and I teach yoga. So when things are going well, when I teach, and actually they're in very, like they're never going badly in any of my yoga class. Like there'd be the odd minor hiccup, but it's always going well enough. I suppose it's kind of all the things that go around it that, you know, like the connecting of money and, uh, you know, the negotiating and certainly marketing and all of those, none of those things flow for me on any level. Um, mm. But the actual class itself, whether I'm participating or leading the class, yeah, I, I feel in flow then. Yeah, definitely. So you can isolate that, which is really good. And that's all that's all that's required. Like sometimes I ask people and they'll say, I built a spreadsheet, you know, and, and actually as you mine that and you kind of unpack the layers of what that looks like, which we're not going to do a huge amount of. But um, as you unpack the layers, it's, you know, bear in mind, I work with people who are who are trying to get to something that they want to you know, spend time, you know, working at and trying to earn money that way. So maybe it's for you or you know it's not for me to say necessarily but it sounds like you've already found what it is but perhaps you could you know utilize the support of other people on some of the other aspects potentially i don't know if that's an option for you but but it sounds like you've already you know found the the thing that you, you know you're in your zone when you're teaching yoga which is which is what you're paid to do which is so um i don't know how much work we can do here <laughs> <laughs> some, yeah so I'm curious, James, that when you just say if you can come up with um, an example, just say if any of the participants here come up with their own example, whether it's related to sport, whether it's related to some other aspect of their life, whether it's work or dancing or surfing or yoga or, or if it's, I don't know, if it's um, in coaching, like, I mean, I, I know the feeling of being in flow and coaching is like, it's like everything else disappears and you're just totally 100% present and focused and aware in that moment. And there's like nothing else is interfering with that. That would be a very quick example of what it feels like for me. So I'm wondering if, um, if um, find or picking out those elements, is, does that help somebody to figure out then where they go from there if they're relating this, this to work? Yeah, I mean, it's it's multi, I, I suppose it's like no one singular approach that I would take. So this is just one exercise. And so often people haven't thought about that for a while or they haven't added any significance because as you say, Emery, like the experience of flow, it, it almost doesn't stay in your memory. It's like it's it's you're not necessarily laying down memories at the time. You're kind of so like just in the flow, in the zone that you don't necessarily recognize it. And actually, you know, some of the people I've worked with, they, they are really struggling to find their way into, um, you know, it, some of its self-worth and self-value and, and, and kind of really recognizing where they're adding something to the world and, 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 you know, for themselves and for the benefit of others. So, you know, just being able to kind of go back and it might be right back into when they're in school or whatever, it actually just brings it into the conversation. Then you can kind of unpack that and, and you've got a starting place, but it's very, very um, specific for each individual. So it's, it's hard to talk about uh, in general terms because usually what happens is as you start to pull at the threads, it starts to kind of open up and then their mind is just um, more kind of charged with positivity and more engaged around, you know, the, what the exercise that you're doing. And then, you know, you layer in like a psychometric or something like that, which might support or back up or augment something that they've said. And then you've got, you can have kind of more conversations around what that might actually begin to look like because um initially like the, for me i'm just kind of discovering so i'm not expecting to kind of get to any results but i'm expecting to get some um 
uh, kind of components that we can put on the workbench almost, you know, d things that we can play with our, our post-it notes, if you like, you know, things that we can think and look at and then move around. Um, but yeah, like, so the exercise really is once they hit upon a few things then to just mine it for everything it's worth. So like for that chap I said about building a spreadsheet, you know, he, he was building a massive financial model actually. And so, you know, what we uncovered was that it's, it's like, it's a version of strategy that he particularly needs. And, and at the time he was just working on it on his own solidly for like three days or four days as a management consultant. And he wasn't really going to bed or, you know, he was just so in it. Like it was just, he was totally engrossed. And, and that for me is like, that's gold dust to understand if you're trying to help somebody find their way into, you know, work, like being really satisfied by their work, you know, you can't go beyond those examples. And yet, I don't think we think about or dwell on those things enough um, because yeah, that's it, us in our zone and we're all so different and unique that we shouldn't really assume that, you know, my example is going to be the same as someone else's. And it might also be, you might end up in the same career as somebody else, but you might end up doing a totally different aspect of it. Um, um, I just see that there's a question here from Noel O'Gara. Um, all of what you're saying is really good. I love art and I could stay all day painting, but nothing else would get done. What about balance? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what about balance? So is this in terms of, well, I'll, I'll just assume, um, or you can answer if you wish. Um, in terms of, are you thinking about art in terms of a way of making money or is it just that it's just something that you enjoy? Uh, I'll, I'll assume. Um, let me read that question again. Nothing else will get done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's tricky. I mean, I suppose I'm uniquely kind of focusing on on helping people find a way of, of making money doing something that they love. So I guess what would I'd be curious about is, you know, is that something that you're interested in kind of making money at? And, and if so, we could, you know, spend time exploring that and, and kind of put that on the chopping block. But equally... You, you know, for me, I would never want to make money at rock climbing. I, I just think that would dilute my experience of it. So if it's, if your art is something like that, then <laughs> I guess, you know, well, it's kind of time management then, isn't it? It's like, there's different ways of managing things, um, having some level of boundaries around it. It's, um, it's tricky. It's a bigger conversation for sure, but an interesting one. Mm. I think the whole thing about, well, I mean, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that the thing about define or uh going back and looking at experiences where we have felt like we're in flow or in the zone is to kind of even think about what were the elements that were involved in that that then can be maybe applied to work like for you it's like you don't necessarily want to make money out of rock climbing but there are elements maybe that or qualities that are present in rock climbing that can then also be applied in work or that you're looking like if it's for the example in art it might be that creativity is just something that really nourishes you so it might not be that you make money becoming a painter but there it might be something along the creativity lines that you know is in a different avenue but it's still along the lines of creativity that brings out those elements in you or those qualities in you would that make sense yeah that's it I think you've you've kind of nudged me along there I've, I've kind of forgotten to mention that because I'm so I'm so in flow and I'm doing it probably <laughs> I haven't remembered but um yeah I, I, I exactly like I'm just looking to pull out ingredients I suppose are elements and I think for me as a you know rock climbing like a key thing in rock climbing when you're outside is that you're you're partnered up with somebody and you know you you have like it, it might sound cliche but you know your life is in their hands and, and developing that friendship and that kind of one-to-one -one kind of working team and making good decisions together is is really like a big part of it for me and I think that's also found in in the way I like to work like I like to work one-to-one -one. I like to kind of really get to know somebody it's you know it's a different person to how I am when I'm you know doing my best work and and so I think the same is true and um, so like you say with the art example there you know it could be creativity but it could be just working on beavering away on your own like it could be that you don't like distraction uh, you know or it could, there could be any number of things and I think what, what's interesting for me is just being openly curious and keep on keep on pulling and asking and, and kind of like sifting to try and find because when you hit upon it with somebody they they tend to kind of like pop almost or you know that there's a different level of energy around the, their answers 
and I suppose I'm just looking for that. Um, and then, as I said, you've got ingredients that you can kind of put down and it's, it's almost like an equation really. It's, it's, you know, it's not a finished picture until, you know, maybe some weeks later or whatever, but, but you're kind of just trying to put in, you know, if you think about it, like bowling, you've got those kind of um, things that you put down the lanes when you're playing with kids to stop the ball and going into the gutter. It's kind of like that. You're kind of trying to get some sort of guide rails um, and just kind of navigate the uncertainty until you've got, you know, enough of them that, that, you know, you can get a clearer idea of where you're headed. Mm. Very good. Um, if any of you have any questions about any of this, you can put them in the chat box. Um, anything else that would be helpful for people who are, you know, looking to maybe find more meaningful work? Um, yeah, I think meaningful, yeah. So it's, it's funny, some people come to me and they're like, I don't know what my passion is, I don't know what my passion is. And I think that's, I, I, you know, I, I think that's often your brain kind of getting in the way because I think, it, often it doesn't take long you know having a conversation and kind of getting into it and and things I would do the exercises I would take are like what what frustrates you like what you know what do you get really annoyed about like you know do you clash with your husband or your sister or you know or do you get really enraged and almost throw the remote control at Donald Trump or whatever on the remote on the tv you know like what are the things that kind of you know kind of bring your frustrations because either that itself or the other side of that, like are, are often the things that we feel passionate about. And, you know, I, so I think, yeah, when you, when you kind of clash with people, um, that's, that's a, you know, like an, an area where you can kind of just maybe put that to one side and, and maybe do a little bit of analysis afterwards and think, you know, what was going on there? Why did I clash? Like one of the clashes I used to have with my wife quite a lot, thankfully she, we don't have it so much anymore is um, the way she fills the dishwasher and the way I fill the dishwasher. <laughs> It's like a common one, but uh, so, you know, she doesn't care basically. And I care about everything coming out immaculately clean because I think that's the job. <laughs> so I'll spend like quite a long time, like filling the dishwasher, which is such a blokey thing, but um, potentially, but um, anyway, so, and that's something we used to clash about, but like, if you kind of pull all that away from the emotion and the kind of <laughs> silly little, like, you know, marital um, tips or whatever, actually systems and kind of getting things, um, like my background is software engineering so kind of getting things orderly and kind of making things work and you know that's important to me um, and it's important to me in my work and I, I guess that's another ingredient in the mix um, just as an example so that's one place to start is just kind of like what are the things that really rub you up the wrong way and um, because either that itself like um interesting it's thematic I listened to a podcast the other day and and there was a midwife being interviewed and she was talking about um she was talking about going into people's houses and getting frustrated that they were putting on the dishwasher five five times while she was there during the day with just a handful of things in it and she was like oh it's just <laughs> killing me because it's uh, such a waste of water and energy and you know so like things like that you know like clearly she has a an interest in sustainability or you know something like that so that, that's one way of accessing it mm. so it's to kind of look at the things that are bothering you and then it's almost like okay so why is that bothering me or why is that frustrating me um and then it's kind of like finding the value behind it does that make sense yeah yeah it, yeah it depends what the thing is really doesn't it but i think it, it points uh, for me i i think of all of these things as being like a, a pointer they point in a direction it might be a little bit blunt and very often it's very blunt but you know it, you're kind of it's at least getting you moving somewhere that then you can continue to explore and um almost see it as a little research project like what you know what is it about this you know yeah so what is it about the dishwasher then that was like do you know what i mean what was it about like the dishwasher that was bothering you was it the waste or was it like you know it's it's a bit yeah it's a little like one of my high values is um minimal waste or, or zero waste ideally so when you think about that in terms of designing a system which like you know, the way I work is, is kind of a system behind it, I suppose. But, you know, when I used to develop software, there was definitely, you know, systems in place. And so if you're developing software, like one of the great things about software is that it's reducing the amount of waste. And in particular, the thing I despise the most is the waste of human potential. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in, in, in thinking about a dishwasher, like kind of taking it away from psychology and people, but 
it, like in my mind, if you're putting stuff in, I just I want it to come back out clean. So I want the system, the full system to work and not to be kind of having to take the dishes out and then like give them a little clean afterwards. So I, I think what it what it says to me is that quality is important in the way I do things. And, um, you know, that that I kind of I, I get a lot of joy and satisfaction from all the, the little kind of individual parts coming together to kind of make, you know, the, the whole better and, and you know the same will be true when you look at my, the furniture I used to make like it, uh, I, I was training at the time but it took me three months to make a coffee table once like 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 uh, you know it's a long time I mean that coffee table is worth a lot of money but um but nonetheless you know and I was learning so I was learning how to bend timber and stuff and you know there's a lot of fractured wood and uh, you know as part of the process but um you know I think that's that's uniquely who I am you know, I'm kind of interested in quality. I'm interested in, in attention to detail and delivering the highest job that I can do. So, you know, obviously I'm super anal and that's what we're all understanding now, but <laughs> that is that is like, if I was on the choppy block, that's what you discover, you know, and that's, you can't ignore that stuff and then assume that I'm going to, if you take that away and make me work. Um, so I, I, for a time before I took on doing furniture, I worked in this, this kind of woodwork shop that was making, um, yeah, it was making furniture, but it was doing it really quickly, like almost like habitat type stuff, like quite quick. And I, I just couldn't, I just could, I, I just wanted to spend too long and everything. Like it didn't work for me to be an employee there because they were selling chairs for 110 pounds. Like, you know, like that, that, that just doesn't work. So like, and that was disharmony, you know, that, that just didn't, you know, I didn't like going in there. I was finding ways of kind of applying my skills in different ways in the, in the place, trying to systemize things and improve the flow of things whereas other guys are coming in just kind of you know just yeah. they're able to just work at a different pace so yeah. you know that that environment wasn't suitable for me mm -hmm. mm. very good um so sorry i saw somebody put up their hand does somebody have a question is it i might have just been distracted by a nod or something oh. <laughs> <laughs> um there's a couple of comments here <laughs> dishwasher I had the dishwasher problem, so I now load it, but I'm now frustrated with the dishes waiting to be loaded by me. So doubly frustrated. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, those yeah. might have a dishwasher story. <laughs> <laughs> um, Orla, you said, what about fear and or procrastination? Oh, goodies. Can you can you elaborate, Orla? Um, well, I kind of think procrastination is a little bit can can stem from fear mm -hmm. quite often yeah um, it's not only like i'd say fear or kind of bad nutrition you know <laughs> one or the other or both or yeah bad nutrition can come from fear as well i suppose but um yeah i mean it does uh, yeah it does prevent you from feeling like you can do a good job at something or or I, even if you can do a good job at something like, you know, you'll still have off days. Mm. And um, I suppose if you're a person who has been, I suppose maybe if you've had a difficult childhood or anything like that, um, that might be your starting position when you approach anything. Um, and very hard to get over um yeah yeah i can speak to that certainly um and and i i know all about this in my own experience but but it maybe if i bring up a, a client example so uh, one of my clients who I worked with for a long time very very successful entrepreneur like you know self-starter um he some of his fears that we ended up talking about because i guess you know that's the the beautiful position of being a coach you, you get to hear you get to really step inside their their head and their hear about their thinking which is just such a privilege but for him there was a couple of things one he actually didn't like speaking on the phone um and that was an important aspect of his who were kind of listening in on his conversations of course they really weren't I'm sure but you know that was his perception which is valid and so um in the end he ended up communicating to the whole office as part of a piece of work i was actually facilitating that this was a this was the case for him and and um it was a huge 
it was actually amazing because he really demonstrated how to be vulnerable and how to kind of admit and own your own weaknesses. Um, but also people had a better understanding. And, and so when they saw his phone ring and he jumped up and kind of went out of the office or whatever, you know, they, they kind of, I suppose for him, it was important that they, you know, they cut him some slack or, you know, people probably no one ever really noticed, but, you know, he kind of got to, to discuss it and, and kind of feel a bit better about it. And the other thing for the same individual was um, presenting like his, his kind of vision uh, to the company. And again, as the company grew, there's more and more faces they're kind of looking at him when he was doing his, his kind of cascade of where the informa- where the company's going to be in the next year or five years. And he just found those experiences really difficult. So we worked on all sorts of things about like what might help him feel better about that. And then, you know, he could actually maybe communicate some of these things back to the team. And again, which demonstrated his vulnerability and ability to kind of flex and, um, you know, it, it kind of role models that it was a, a place where, <clears throat> you know, we're, we're open, we're up for those types of conversations. But, but to answer your question, when I'm working with him or anyone like that, with any of these kind of more psychological barriers, which, you know, we all have them. And I think, you know, confidence would be a, a broad theme around some of them as well. I proceed with a lot of caution and and I take time because I think there's already enough damage and enough baggage around a lot of this stuff. So anything is a win, you know, anything. And so it wouldn't often be like the main thrust of a conversation, like a two hour coaching session. Sometimes it is, but it will come up. And so by the end of the session, we might try and set a little kind of micro step that they might be able to try um you know over the next month or something and and then report back in the next session so you know if it's if it's phone calls like i'm just making this up now i can't remember exactly how we we talked about that one but um if it's having phone calls that you're afraid of or whatever like we we might just kind of say well you know can you have a phone call in this scenario or you know like just a micro step but usually i'm not kind of adding the ideas it's them that are adding the ideas and then you know i'm just helping them kind of um develop them and anchor them but but um yeah, I, I think in that scenario, you know, he, this chap is working with a coach, obviously, and it's it's good because if you trust that individual, you've kind of got some support and you've got someone to talk about. And even that in itself, as we know from therapy, kind of helps to kind of potentially unravel and, and release some of the, the kind of, um, you know, the, the kind of hardening and, and closing that happens as a result of, you know, as you said, childhood traumas or or just, just well, whatever, it's just there, isn't it? But um, But yeah, I think... I think um, setting a low, a low kind of um, uh, um, what's the term? Low expectation on yourself for what, like even a micro success might be, um, and rewarding yourself for that. And then you know habits are a big one, like trying to cultivate even a small micro habit. Um, and, and you know there was an example recently where. Uh, um, I, I was having a session and, and it, was, it was in the summer and the guy I was working with, he was saying, um, it, it was like a facilitated thing with a whole group of people and you're saying, okay, what, what do any of you want to work on? And, and I said, well, I've got a pile of papers at the end of my, at the end of my like, cupboard or whatever that I'm just not getting to and it's kind of really frustrating me. And there was, there, there was some fear in there because I knew that some of the papers I was going to uncover were kind of, you know, had important stuff on them. And, um, and, and I said, I, I really need like two hours to kind of get into it. And he said, okay, I'm going to set you a task. I want you to do it for five minutes every day for this week. And I was like, oh, well, I won't, I won't get enough done in five minutes. It's, gonna, it's one of those tasks you have to get into. And he's like, okay, but this is your challenge. You can only spend five minutes, set a timer, stop when it's finished. And I did it and it made all the difference. And even though every, every time I went to it, I had to kind of undo <clears throat> what I'd done. And like the, the five minutes were gone so quickly that I wasn't really breaking the back on it but that wasn't the point I was fundamentally in a different frame of mind to kind of attack the task like I was actually I was setting such a small barrier for success if you like or such a small um uh, like I, I could I could succeed by doing so little that it felt like I was winning and then you build momentum um so anyway that's uh, I don't know if any of those things will speak to the examples you had in your minds but certainly one of them <laughs> Good luck. The pile of papers. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah.
Um, thank you, Orla. Has anybody else got any more questions? I'm just a little bit conscious of time. We have about just eight to 10 minutes left, depending on how some of you might need to leave um, on the dot at eight o'clock. And if that's the case, then that's of course fine. Um, if we have an extra five minutes after that, that would be great. I'd love to have more time with you, James. I might have to schedule these sessions for a bit longer. But yeah, does anybody else have another question um, before I ask some of my own? Anyone else? Anyone at all? You can always put them in the chat box um, as well if you want. So James, a couple of little rapid fire questions that I want yeah. you to answer. I'll try and be rapid. Yeah, well, you, you can, yeah, just see how we go. Um, so what's the greatest, this might not be a rapid fire one, what's the greatest obstacle or challenge that you've had to deal with or are currently dealing with at the moment? Um, uh, yeah, I'm currently dealing with this. So there's a lovely little mantra or phrase, which is not how, but who. And I really like this, um, but I'm really finding it difficult to implement. So basically that means like if you're, like, so I have my own business and I'm, I'm kind of embarking on another one, but um, that means that when you come up against a problem, I'm building a web page at the moment and I can do aspects of that, but there are aspects like writing the content that I'm struggling with. And rather than me keep on bashing my head off the wall, I should really, you know, the question is like, not how do I get better at this? How do I do it? It's like, who can I ask to help? And that, you know, that, that, that transforms things. And, and I've done that a little bit in the past, but I'm struggling to continue to implement that. So that's, I feel like I should have that tattooed on me somewhere <laughs> because that's, it's just like, I'm trying to unlearn the fact that I continually think it's my job to do everything. It's an interesting one. And um, I'm going to jump in here because I was listening to something during the week as well. And it's an interesting one because it ties back to what you were saying about maybe knowing our strengths or knowing the things that we're good at and the things that we enjoy doing and the things that we're passionate about or have purpose and like doing those. And then for the things that we're not so good at, you can always ask someone else to do it or, or hire somebody to do your accounts or whatever it is, or your marketing or promotions or whatever the things are that you struggle with. And um, I think it's a trap that we, a lot of us can fall into is thinking that we actually have to do all of this ourselves and that we just have to get better at the stuff that we really don't like doing. So yeah, anyway, it's, it's an interesting. Exactly. Concept. And you know, here's me kind of to helping other people with this stuff but like just totally snarled on it myself like <laughs> caught on the barbed wire like and I think there is some fear in in that because you know yeah there's lots yeah we could unpack that another time but you know so I I think like yeah you, you know I've I've had learnings that kind of have tried to keep me safe away from you know doing it myself and stuff so so that's something I'm trying to unpick mm. next rapid fire okay what are you passionate about Oh, um, yeah, I, I mean, it's I'm repeating myself now, but but like the notion that everyone has you know, huge gifts and talents, everybody, everybody absolutely does. And I'm really passionate about finding a way to help more and more people, you know, understand what they are for themselves at the very least, because what I found is that when you when people become much more aware of that, there's, there tends to be a build up of urgency around kind of implementing something to do that, too. You know, there's kind of you know a bit of momentum picks up so mm -hmm. so yeah I'm really passionate about you know changing things uh, like long term I'd love to kind of change the education system so that it's it's kind of um baked in from the start you know that, that um teachers part of their job will be to help kids understand like actually you're very good at you know reasoning how that Thomas the Tank Engine train goes around the track or whatever you know but like just playing that back in because you can there's a piece of uh, research that was done in New Zealand where they looked at three-year-olds and they figured out what their strengths were and they looked at the same group of three-year-olds 23 years later when they were 26 so had a very long study and they found that lo and behold they're good at the same stuff yeah. and in a way like that's not that surprising most people aren't that surprised what is surprising is that that information is not kept with you like that's not you know you're not kind of that's not reinforced and you're not, you don't have lots of people telling you that when you grow up, like you're really good at this. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something I'd like to change. That's what I'm passionate about. That answers another question. Um, I was going to ask you what specific system would you change or how would you go about changing it? So that answers that with the education thing. Um, what brings you joy? Year old. 
<laughs> sorry, you froze there. For she, a uh, Willow <laughs> is her name. Like she's. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, I, I just said my three-year-old, um, Willow. Um, she brings me joy. She's hysterical, uh, as Amory will attest, because she's seen her. <laughs> I have this buff that you wear around your neck, and and Willow discovered it the other day and was wearing it as a boob tube. <laughs> I'm just dancing around like she was going out in the town, but it's <laughs> just like hysterical. Like I just love spending time with her. Um uh in particular. And I've I have a seven-year-old as well, and he brings me joy in different ways. Um I wonder will she be doing that when she's 26? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping she gets out of her system now in some ways. <laughs> and then the other thing at the moment is uh, running. I'm really enjoying running. I've only really taken up running. Uh so I'm trying to be a better runner and yeah, I've got, I'm working with a coach and she sets me a program and I go out and do it and it feels great. I'm just loving it. So, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. Two more questions. What three books would you recommend? Oh, okay. Well, I kind of talked about it already. So I, that's an easy one to mention the habits one. Um, so oh. that's a book called um, Atomic Habits by James Clear. Yeah. It's, it's one of my favorites at the moment because behavior change is really hard. Like, <clears throat> you get to stuff with people and you work with people like I do, like you get some quick wins, just flow in and they, they're just delighted with you. They think you're the best things in sliced bread. And then after a while of working with them, you get to the gnarly stuff. That's really hard to change. And that's behavior change. Like you, you need to really want to change that stuff. And a lot of people do, but then the next thing is how do you go about changing that, that hard, like wired stuff, like the fear-based stuff for, and actually atomic habits, I think is, is one of the best methods, um, and it, it's quite simple. It's a lovely book. It's really easy read. It's very, very popular. Lots of Amazon reviews. So that's one. Um, oh, another one that just sprung to mind because it's kind of thematic for this conversation. But um, the book is called The Why Are You Here Cafe? And it's a lovely little fable. It's it's um, a very simple, lighthearted, easy read. Like, And, and uh, I just love that little book. Um, oh, and then oh, it's tricky. Just choosing one more. Um, there's a book that you can't you might not be able to get anymore but sometimes it's available secondhand it's called The Power of Full Engagement mm -hmm. and it's all about uh, managing your energy and uh, it, it divides energy into four quadrants which are um, physical energy uh, emotional energy mental energy and spiritual energy and it just talks about the need to kind of manage those things and, and the book is very good it talks about like um, uh, like life is a series of sprints it's not a marathon so like you know have a burst do something like do your art if that person's still on the line do your art but then you know have have some respite and do something else but like you know just kind of think about it in that way where um yeah it's not it, it's not a slog um anyway so that's that's a third book Great. but there are many i could have said uh, time to think can i add that one in as well by nancy klein yeah, that's, that's a coaching book good. yeah time to think it's a really good one yeah um okay this one might be a big one what does it mean to stand in your power oh let me just stand in my power for a second see <laughs> do the power pose <laughs> um hmm oh that's it that's you know always know you've got a good question when the person can't answer it immediately uh i think for me it's it's very much in my mind because of the things we've discussed but I think it would be some combination of like you in the zone, you know, like you kind of in that kind of flow state. Um, and, and, you know, I'd have versions of that when I'm playing with my daughter or running or working. Um, I think that's, that's me and my power definitely like, and there's, yeah, there's like time with Willow, there's time running, there's time with my wife, there's um, time scheming and designing this time with my clients, like all those, all those um, different things, um, uh, any one of them is, is me and my power. And I, you know, I adore all of that stuff. Great. Thank you so much, James. Um, I'd love to chat longer, but I'm aware of the time. So um, where can people find out more about you? <laughs> I don't think there's much else to say. <laughs> it's, uh, it's all I been rinsed out now. There's a lot more to say and that we <laughs> might end up having another session and talk about something else and completely different. But um, yeah, so if somebody wants to well, find out more about you. Yeah, yeah my, my website or LinkedIn. So uh, my, web, my website, the best one is jamesohalloran.com. Um, and so that's like my coaching uh, I'm working on something else, which is not really ready for, for, um, I, I was trying to get it ready this week, but it's not, it's not come together. 
but uh, that's going to be sweet dot work um and it's it's just it's definitely not ready for your consumption but by all means you can go and look at a half broken website if you want. <laughs> it's not being published anywhere but um shh, don't tell anyone um yeah so sweet dot work is one thing and uh but really james and james i think you linked to amory when he describes this but that actually has a link to my linkedin so if any of you use linkedin feel free to reach me on there and if somebody wants to book a session with you how would they go about that um yeah uh just um find me ver- via my website really there's a contact page on there and um yeah that'd be the best way any other things coming up for you at the moment courses workshops or things going just, sorry just one thing I, I i'm experimenting with something called fiverr which is um like an online platform for um for different services like for freelancers or different things so i've got a, a little pro, um profile on there so you can search for business coaching and you can find me on there. And if you wanted to book in a session, you'd get it for a five or five, $5 <laughs> because I'm kind of experimenting with it. So I want to just gain a bit of traction. And then um, and then obviously I'd work on my business model after that. So by all means, if you know anyone or wish to, you can capitalize on that while the price is low. And mm-hmm. um, what was the next question, Emery? Just if you have any courses or workshops or anything coming up at the moment. Yeah, I'm working on a workshop, um, a series of, uh, it's like a course, it will be a series of workshops um, it'll be delivered over zoom and uh it's it's cool like uh we're, we'll do um a strengths-based psychometric we'll do kind of exercise around flow that sort of stuff but also um i'll be sending each participant a really interesting box of lego and we'll do something called lego series play which amory has done yeah, <laughs> it's a uh, it, it, it's fun basically it kind of it brings you back to your inner child in a way it's not it's not intended necessarily to be therapeutic but it tends to be a little bit therapeutic but much more the, the facilitator, so me in this case, would ask um, questions and you have this interesting mix of very brightly coloured and beautiful and interesting Lego and you have very little time to build your answer to the question. And what happens is your hands, you might not be able to cognitively think of the answer, but your gut, you know, your heart or your whatever you think is going on there will will find an answer and then you might only have two minutes to build it. And once you're finished, we go around each person and they they talk about the little model that they've built and there's just unbelievable layers of meaning to be found um even just the choice of colors or whatever you know so so that's one of the tools we use in those workshops but um yeah the intention of the workshop is that you kind of go through a, a series of sessions kind of get tighter as a group um and by the end we work on so, so we've kind of really uncovered like some of the stuff i've talked about like who you are as a person what's meaningful to you all those things um and by the end we we kind of get a real sense of like what's your vision of your of your kind of future and your career and then and then at the last session it's like okay and how are you going to get there and what are the barriers that are going to get in your way and how are we going to make sure that you'll get past them and then i roll the sessions into um like a support group so um so that's yeah that's coming up I, i'm hoping to do one in april but um yeah it's kind of slightly up in the air but if anyone's interested in that i'd love to hear from you and, and we could have a chat about it um and, and we could get you onto a session if you wanted james thank you so much um i really enjoyed the session i hope that you all have enjoyed it too and um um yeah i'll be doing more of these sessions with people if you want to be on one of these sessions get in touch let me know i would love to interview and um if you know of anybody else that you want to recommend to me then please do that um but for now thank you all